All right, we'll start recording now. Thank you guys for joining this chat. I'm sure people will be joining us here in just another minute or two. There's somebody now. Um, but tonight we're just gonna go through the Conservation Congress uh, questions and just take your questions if you have any. And then I've got some updates uh, for you nationally and in Wisconsin. So a lot has been going on this week. I'm just gonna wait just a few more minutes. Or no, no, it's six o'clock. Okay, we will get started. Uh, thank, oh, here we go. Thank you for joining uh, the meeting tonight. Uh, as you know, uh, coming up uh, next week, so April 11th through the 14th, it's up and available for, I uh, can now see your application. I don't understand, sorry. I'm also talking to myself because <laughs> I'm having technical problems. Um, I got a really nice desktop, so I'm not used to my lap. I like to stop using my laptop. And now like I keep hitting the wrong, it doesn't matter, but I, I'm trying to relearn my laptop again. Uh, anyway, uh, it's coming up. It'll be open and online for 72 hours. I was really, really hoping that our resolutions that, you know, the resolutions we talked about a couple weeks ago um, would be up on the website uh, for us to kind of review those because there'll be a bunch. They still are not up. So um, if we need to, and I will, uh, we can do another, you know, maybe half an hour meeting next week to go through to go through resol oh, shoot. Uh, go through resolutions, citizen resolutions. Uh, but in general, you know, I think you can make a good judgment off of off of those. One thing has changed this year that I have not seen before. Uh, all these questions used to be: Do you agree or do you not agree? Yes or no. But this year they have a, a option of a no opinion, which uh, concerns me a little bit. Um, but you know, if there are questions on here, you truly, I, I can't tell you how to vote. I don't think, number one, I don't think it's ethical. Number two, we are a 501c3. So uh, it, it treads a little bit on, you know, direct lobbying. And I, I, I don't think that that's necessarily the right thing to do. So we're going to go through these and I, you know, I'll go through them as quickly as we can. Uh, the other thing that's going to be interesting tonight, <laughs> and thank God these are all, everybody on this call loves wolves, is there is a statewide tornado drill at 6.45 p.m. Why this is funny is that I have five dogs and there's no place you're not going to hear them start howling with the tornado siren at 645. So I will try to get through this uh, as quick as you can. And maybe the do my dogs will provide us a little entertainment entertainment at the end of, uh, end of the meeting. So you guys can all see my screen okay? Somebody nod or, or say yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. So this is the page. Obviously, we're going to send you, uh, you know, direct link to this uh, via email on Facebook everywhere. And so is everybody else. Sierra Club's going to Humane Society. Uh, voting in this is going to be pretty important. Like I said, you know, we, we said, you know, there's, there's three or four questions that are, uh, you know, directly pertain to, you know, your interests on wildlife. There's also some questions here that I think are, are even bigger than that and really important. But when I, we send this to you, it won't be, uh, so we're on this page, um, we'll send you the direct link. It won't be uh, as divided in this as it looks now, like where, you know, you need to click on the DNR advisory, you need to click on NRB, you need to click on WCC, it'll all be one survey. Um, so I'm sorry that, that is, uh, that's a little bit confusing, but this is where we can read the questions ahead of time. <clears throat> on this webpage as well, if, uh, hopefully you can still see this. You can see where the resolutions here are down along additional resources. I will let you know as soon as the 2022 resolutions are up and I can let you know, you know, I guarantee you there's going to be some uh, not, you know, not wildlife friendly ones and some of the ones that you even, you submitted yourselves, which is awesome. Um, so that being said, we're going to just start here again. It'll, oh shoot. Um, Makai, I know that you're on this call. Is it possible, maybe you can chime in really quickly for me, that I can make you co-host to admit people into the meeting? Um, yeah, I can try. I'm not sure if I know everybody that is allowed to be okay. admitted, but I'll it's try. It's like the name of Daryl or something, then you know me. <laughs> but this is a public meeting, so, you know, nothing that we're saying here is, I don't really mind if, if uh, you know, I don't, I don't really even think they're our enemy, but nothing here is... Uh, you know, we're not discussing strategy here, just going through the questionnaires. Thank you, Makai. Okay, so 
Uh, again, this will all be one survey. It'll be uh, online. It'll, you'll just click through it, right? You'll just click the yes or no buttons as you go. And you know what, maybe we I will send instructions uh, for next week, but let's just go through the questions we know are gonna be on here. So they are divided up by uh, the DNR, uh, the Conservation Congress and the Natural Resource Board. Um, so let's start with the DNR advisory questions. So I'm going to click on this. And these are things that, uh, uh, without going too far into it, uh, resolutions that people have submitted. So these started as those very same resolutions that many of you submitted. Um, okay, so low system resources, great, thanks a lot, computer. <laughs> um, but you can look on here, um, we'll start with the DNR advisory um, and going through these questions. I'm, I can't really tell you how to vote, um, but I can, I'm gonna go through it quickly. Um, you, you know, these, some can be kind of technical. So I'm not gonna go through the whole history of this. I think, you know, you can, you'll see this yourself when you go to vote, but do I favor implementing a standard structure season? Oh, she got it picked out. Uh, for the Boundary Waters and Great Lakes, for muskies, um, you know, again, you kind of have to look through here and see what the management goal is. Again, this is coming from the agency to us. Like, do you want us to do this? So, you know, just go ahead and take a look at this. Um, you can see that they, their management goal is to simplify regulations. Uh, I like regulations, but in some cases, maybe, God dang it, McAfee on his crazy island is interfering with my, can you guys see that pop up too? Okay, there I got it. Um, I don't think that's necessarily, oh shoot, sorry guys, I'm trying here. Um, so that, you know, you just got to look at the season structure. It's been in place the way it is for 50 years. I don't know that we need to, to simplify regulations. I'm always for, you know, there's a reason that it's there. Um, all right, number two. And this is gonna be very, this is very contentious uh, outside our little wolf world. I mean, you guys know that I love fish so much, but uh, this is gonna be a walleye statewide bag limit. Um, and you can kind of just read the history of it. Just remember that, when the DNR advisory questions, they're giving you actual, like, somewhat scientific information. So this basically says, like, uh, you know, do we favor a walleye bag limit of three per day on all inland waters? Bag limits for Great Lakes, uh, Wisconsin, Iowa would stay unchanged, as would water with the bag limit. You know, I, I think that's up to you. Uh, you know, the, you can tell that the, the proposal is to gauge support for reducing the standard daily bag limit for walleye. So if you think there should be less walleye har harvested, then I would vote yes. And if you think we should be harvesting more walleye, I would vote no. <laughs> so I can't really tell you. Um, I, I will get more into depth on the things that we have an expertise on. Number three, walleye regulation. Um, this, and this is coming from the agency. It will give you the data uh, that basically in this question, would we favor the DNR adding a rehabilitation regulation so basically what they're saying here is, you know, no harvest of walleye uh, that are larger. So giving older fish a chance to, to exist out there. I, you know, in my opinion, that would be, makes sense that the agency. The next question, I'm sorry, I'm going through these. Some of these I know are gonna be, you know, fisheries is uh, complicated, but there are a couple of really important ones on here. And, I'll, and this is why I'll tell you. Data collection on fishing tournaments. I don't really, you know, even believe fishing tournaments should be legal, but there is. This basically says, should we implement a self-reporting on fishing tournaments? A lot of those guys take a ton of fish, and we, you know, I think the agency should collect as much scientific data on our wildlife as possible. So, you know, for this is, you know, there's these small tournaments. They could be using this uh, as a way to collect data if you think they're doing it anyway. This basically just says, should we implement uh, reporting on it? So if you think we should have more data and scientific data on fishing tournaments, it's mostly going to be bass. I'll tell you that in muskies. But um, no, th that's a question. I know some of these are not uh, not too complicated, but number five, vote no. <laughs> but number five is uh, uh, getting bait for fishing on VHS. VHS is a disease of fish. That's horrible. It's kind of like the CWD almost of the fish world. So when fish get it, they twirl in the water. It's not a nice way to die. 
uh, and extremely contagious, uh, very actually pretty similar uh, to, VA, to CWD. Um, the thing about this is like bait's always a problem, right? And this is exactly how VHS is spread in Wisconsin. So if you look at this question, do we support allowing personal bait harvest of minnows from these infected waters using this, as long as no live minnows are moved away from the water body of harvest, regardless of the source? This sounds good in theory, like, okay, well, this, you know, should I just take minnows from a place that's already infected? I don't think that they will keep it there. So, you know, this, again, you've got the options, yes, no, or no opinion. Um, I don't think they need to be, uh, you know, this, I'm just telling you, like, uh, you know, our organization stance, I cannot tell you how to vote. Um, again, I think this is one of those toss ups, I can see exactly what the agency means. Because a lot of people are getting their bait from dealers, you know, you go to the bait shop, um, and getting it there, and then taking potentially infected minnows to our lakes, which infect all of our fish. This is basically saying, well, maybe we should just let people get minnows from infected water and use those as long as they don't move them. So I don't necessarily think there's a yes or no answer here. FYI, I'm not seeing a waiting room. Okay, sorry, you guys, one second. Um, Makai, if you can hear me, there is no one waiting in the waiting room currently, so we're good. Uh, you guys know how I feel about sturgeon. Um, our position is that sturgeon are an endangered species. They may be doing well in Lake Winnebago, but they're not doing well uh, nationwide. Uh, Fish and Wildlife Service is currently working to, there's one, uh, currently working to uh, list the lake sturgeon as an endangered species. Um, so in this question here, do we favor a catch and release season? I can tell you, oh, I'll just, I got it. I can tell you that um, catch and release sounds right, nice, but most fish that are caught and released die. The mortality is really high on recreational fishing. So say you're going out fishing and you release the fish. Uh, the mortality rate is high. I don't know what the mortality rate on hook and line for lake sturgeon. Um, I don't think they'll have much success, to be honest. It's very difficult, but I don't think we should be ex expanding, or I shouldn't say me, I mean, Great Lakes Wildlife Alliance, when I say this, I don't think we should be expanding opportunities to harvest endangered species. And that's been our stance on sturgeon spearing and hook and line. <sighs> Break. Here's another one. Again, they're giving you all the background. You can take a look at it. Uh, do we support Wisconsin DNR working with Minnesota DNR to establish game fish regulations for a continuous season for the St. Croix River from Taylor's Charles downstream to Prescott that are consistent with those of the Mississippi River? I would say yes. I think that, you know, on these state borders, the agencies, you know, it doesn't make sense. And let me tell you that Minnesota's uh, agency is much more restrictive. So I'm all about uh, collaboration with the agencies. Basically, that's all they're saying. Should the agencies collaborate on animals that share borders. Yeah, I think they probably should. And when I say I, I mean our organization, I apologize. Channel and flathead catfish. I promise the questions get more exciting after this, why I started with this one. Uh, going down, you can again read this. Um, do you support the DNR establishing separate bag limits for each catfish species in the St. Croix River? I can tell you that some, uh, right now they're all lumped together. Some catfish species are doing well, some are not. I absolutely think it's a good idea to uh, have different regulations for the different uh, catfish in the river. So we can just tell you that, uh, you know, lumping all species together and reduce, we're, we're usually anti-reducing restrictions. These rules have been in place for a reason. Gonna keep going. It's the same thing here. Um, the same question, different species should, and this one is pretty good. This one is actually about creating a refuge for fish so that there's a place for both Minnesota and Wisconsin agree that there'll be no fishing in this area, especially for muskies, pikes, sturgeon. I can't remember what else was on this list. I could go back and read. I think saugers are on here and some rough fish, but um, yeah, fish need a refuge. They need to be left alone. <laughs> so, uh, I think it's good for all of those species. Um, and it protects about a mile of river, which are the prime spawning grounds for a lot of these fish. So yeah, I think this is a really great idea. Again, it's about collaboration. I'm just telling you what we think is a good idea. You again, can't tell you how to vote. All right, fish, some fish stuff's done. 
So now we are on the wildlife management. So that was fisheries. Now we're on wildlife management. This first uh, question 11, do we support an increase in student registration fees for trapper education? Uh, our, our position is yes, increase the fees. Um, you know, they already, a trapping license is only $5 a year to trap as many animals as you want uh, of very many species. Uh, let if, you know, it's again, you'll have to use your, your judgment here. Uh, I know and other uh, groups disagree with us uh, that it should be, oh, let me just make sure I'm adding people. People keep falling out of this meeting. Um, but, you know, uh, why are we paying for trapper education if the costs are high? The trappers should be paying for their education. So that's our position. Oh, sh darn it all. Oh, good. I went backwards. Um, the next question, do we re removing the requirement that youth hunters have a state Canada goose hunting permit? Uh, maybe I'll ask Pat, I can ask, I asked Pat to be on standby because there's a lot of waterfall questions, but I don't think I necessarily need him on this one. We, we believe that uh, it doesn't matter if you're a youth, you're still taking a resource for the public. And uh, I think it teaches value. We think it teaches value to youth that are going to be, I know, harvesting geese uh, that, uh, you know, you should have to have a permit for these animals. And there's a reason for the permitting process. I'll keep going. Um, all right. Allow the purchase of multiple turkey harvest authorizations per day when the season is open. So right now they have, you can only buy one turkey permit a day. They want to make sure, they want to see if you can buy more than that. Again, uh, this is a, one our organization doesn't have an opinion on. Um, if you, you know, there's usually thousands of these left over. Uh, this is not going to be popular necessarily with the folks that are 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 anti hunting, I should say, or you know, and I respect that. I actually I can tell you uh, what our organization uh, actually votes yes on this, and I'll tell you why. Because there are two, uh, there are a ton of turkeys, and they are hurting other uh, native birds here, ruffed grouse. Um, I think that the expansion of turkey, I don't think it puts turkey in jeopardy. Again, you know, we uh, ethical hunters, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with being able to apply for multiple licenses on a day. Uh, again, if you do not believe in turkey hunting, then I think you know exactly how to vote on this one. Next one is a big one that you, maybe you wouldn't, you wouldn't think. So this is about preference points. I have preference points because I applied for a wolf permit <laughs> back in February. Um, basically, this says if you don't have a license or hold a license for that species, you lose your preference points. Uh, the hunting community, I can tell you, and I mean the trophy hunting community. So bear, uh, is elk, and wolf are really huge in preference points because there are not a lot of as many. The the the, the want is there are a lot of people that want a bear license, and preference points move you up in the line. Uh, I think. The answer for this should be, uh, yeah, that no, you can't keep your, you know, I don't, oh, shit, I don't know what to do on this, but uh, my, uh, you know, my gut says, you know, I read through these, and I'm like, if you're not actively hunting and you're just sitting back here, just accumulating points, and then waiting, which would be what I would be doing with a wolf hunt, right? Like, I don't really want to lose my preference points, but I'm not going to be applying for another wolf permit. So this, this is kind of another one of those difficult ones where we're kind of damp, you know, damned if we do, damned if we don't. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, they say loss of points results in customer dissatisfaction. Well, when they say customer, which isn't a customer, it's an agency, it's not a business. <laughs> uh, this is a problematic, this is just problematic. Uh, I say, you know, our position is no, you should not be able to keep your preference points. If you have questions on these, I'm going to stop after this one before I move on to the next one. Have a single raccoon uh, hunting date. Now, this is, you know, me and my raccoons. Uh, all this basically does is it lets residents start hunting raccoons two weeks before non-residents start hunting raccoons. It's, you know, I, I don't, I think it's pretty trivial. My guess is it's one dude wrote this resolution that, you know, what, that wants, uh, that's non-resident that wants to hunt with his resident buddies with raccoons. So I think really that's what this, some of these are tricky like that. I guarantee you it's a, somebody from Illinois wants to run hounds on raccoons with their friend who already lives in Wisconsin. 
if you're not a resident of Wisconsin, you can't do that at the start of the season. So uh, our position is no. We do not want, uh, you know, it's just more killing. <laughs> of, uh, if, if you support raccoon hunting, uh, then fine. But basically, it's just closing a two-week gap. I know there's not a place to comment. I hate all, <laughs> I hate raccoon hunting, unfortunately. Um, oh, okay, number 16, remove the prohibition of hunting and trapping certain species by landowners without a permit during the 24-hour period prior to firearm deer season. This is a real, I do agree with the author. That that's a stupid rule that I don't understand. Um, but I will say that our, our, you know, do we support removing the prohibition of hunting and trapping certain species by landowners without a permit during it? Uh, no, we do, uh, we do not support removing that because we don't support trapping at all. Okay, that is that section. Does anyone have questions on all these? I know I went through quickly. Um, and the, it, really this section is not, uh, it, this section is usually the best one because these are questions coming from the agency to us. So there's actually been somebody who's studied it. I guarantee a biologist has written at least these questions. This isn't, you know, uh, the bear hunters writing this, but uh, just one of their objectives under Walker and has continued onto Evers is to simplify regulations. So they look through all the hunting, trapping and fishing regulations and look where you know, is this a rule that's needed or not? So it's just dependent on you whether you think this regulation needs to be simplified or that it should stay the same. That's every single question on this advisory. And I'll stop there. Does anyone have questions? I do. Yeah, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> in question 15, yes, um, you mentioned about possibly it was an Illinois resident that submitted that resolution or talk and to the agency at least yeah so I, I was unaware that people from out of our state could submit resolutions no that, no I mean that's just a hunch I have I yeah, they can't but this okay. is coming directly from the agency so for for whatever reason and I don't know why I mean then well for let's go through them so you can kind of look state statute mandates separate <laughs> opening dates for raccoon hunting I got to move my little you guys around a little bit so I can read this. Uh, it requires the department to open the season for raccoon hunting for residents two weeks earlier than for non-residents. The staggered opening days of the raccoon hunting season for residents and non-residents contribute to season complexity. The DNR is not aware of any significant competition for this resource or overcrowding that would support this continued opening dates. So this is just a rule simplification. So uh, you know, I'm sure they saw, and there's probably one guy that, that's what I mean. One, I guarantee you, one guy complained to the agency. So they're like, well, yeah, this is kind of a stupid rule. I actually think it is a stupid rule and it probably doesn't result in any more wildlife death or not. Uh, but uh, I don't know the background on why this doesn't make sense to me either. Why do we have a raccoon hunting season open earlier, two weeks before non-residents. There must be a reason <laughs> that they had this. And so, you know, I've looked through this. I couldn't find the reason. Even. I don't know. It, you know may, uh, I don't know why this would be. Probably way back in time, they probably had a coon hunting club that used to come here from out of state uh, and, you know, probably shared the same territory with a local club. I mean, I think that's probably, honestly, where this regulation came from. Uh, but if we look at it, why, uh, you know, right now it's just people in Wisconsin can kill raccoons for two weeks. And then after that, everybody can kill raccoons. So let's have less raccoon death, uh, basically is why we're saying to vote. No, you, you, let's keep the rule, even though it is kind of trivial. Okay, thank you. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Some of these are just, you know, kind of silly, <laughs> especially in this one. But yeah, the, the agency has been, uh, you know, basically charged with reducing regulations on all hunting, trapping, and fishing, um, and was an initiative by Scott Walker to, you know, get rid of all the rules for hunting and trapping. So most of these, uh, some of them are good, like, hey, we should be working with Minnesota on, on animals in the Mississippi River. It shares a border. So it's not necessarily bad, but um, again, that's those questions. We, I don't think there's a lot of serious ones on here for you in this section. 
but uh, does, does that explain things? I know these, this is why we go through this because these questions are like, I mean, they'll throw, they throw this most seasoned people off. Like, well, why would we have two open, I, today I was like, why would we have two opening? I didn't even know this existed. So my guess is it's probably pretty insignificant. Okay, trying to get through before the tornado sirens go off and my pack of house wolves here ruins the meeting. All right. So that is the DNR advisory. Here's the natural resource board advisory questions. This one's nice. It's two questions. <laughs> um, the first one asks, do we support the natural resource board requesting the department to review the impacts of crossbow season on Wisconsin's gun deer season? This is what this is about. The gun people hate the crossbow people. <laughs> and I've sat through the meetings and they really fight. So basically what this is doing is the, the gun deer people, a crossbow, I mean, I don't know a lot about weapons, but I can tell you that the bow hunters, real bow hunters do not like crossbow hunters. And gun deer hunters don't like crossbow hunters because it's basically, I think, maybe, maybe someone can chime in that knows better, but basically they just wanna see uh, the impacts of crossbow season on the deer season. I don't want my money spent on this. So this is, you know, me thinking like, why do, and this is Kazimierski. <laughs> and I just know it because I've been around a long time. So he's Mr. Crossbow and the gun deer hunters are saying, basically you're using a gun, but it just shoots an arrow instead of a bullet. I happen to kind of agree with that assessment. Um, and this is just two petty hunting groups fighting each other. But I don't support it because I don't want our natural resources department to be spending money on a hunting lobby feud. And so our position on this is no, we do not support your, pay, uh, you know, finding out the impact of crossbow hunting on gun hunting. None of, in none of this does it say, hey, what about the deer? No, so it's, it, this is not uh, even really a wildlife question. And you know our natural resource board. So you can imagine these are kind of crazy. I asked Carrie um, to, I sent this to her. I know she's really busy. Um, the next is uh, reducing the prevalence, increasing testing and slowing the spread of chronic wasting disease. Uh, we, it's long, it'll give you all the background here, but the title is a little tricky than really what the question is. The question asks if we agree in a two-year pilot project to, to test if offering a healthy herds incentive payment so we're going to pay hunters and landowners so they will test their deer. I guess if I think it spreads, stops the spread of CWD uh, in reducing prevalence and, and disease spread, it is a pilot project. I think, you know, whatever you think here for this one, uh, it's a complicated one. I'm still waiting for a scientific advisory board and Carrie to get, she's a CWD expert, whether or not we think this will truly reduce or incentivize those to care about CWD. Uh, we, our state clearly doesn't show by policy that they care about CWD. And I'm a little bit, would be a little bit, you know, this incentive money, it comes out of your pocket, my pocket. So I'm a little bit, uh, I <laughs> wish that in here, they said where this money would be coming from. Um, but it looks like they want to use some of the Recovering America's Wildlife Act that's supposed to be for non-game species to fund. So uh, it is a very, this is a, another one of those where it's like, they say they're going to have funding partners to help this, but basically they're going to ask our government to pay for this incentive program. It's two years, I suppose. So, you know, we don't, we have actually no, as of right now, no opinion on it. My hunch says if it truly is uh, going to increase testing rates and stop the spread of CWD, well, then yes. So I am still waiting a little bit for an expert opinion on that. As of tonight, our, our, uh, our, we don't have an opinion on this, but I will let you know when it gets closer because this is pretty complicated. That map is, excuse me. That map is very interesting. Look at the yeah, CWD the map is interesting. Yeah, up north where there's wolves versus down in the southern part of our state where there isn't. Right. Look yeah. where all the I mean, CWD I, is. Yep. Yeah, I think so. I mean, definitely that. I mean, that's not the only factor. It certainly will stop the spread. Um, but you can kind of look at where the deer farms are. Uh, but 
it, all of this started in Iowa County because of deer farms. So I'm not sure, I mean, I mean certainly they limit it, um, but yeah, we can, yeah, let's look at this. Um, this also, this uh, map has not been, is not updated. Yeah, CWDs, uh, counties, now uh, both Rusk, uh, there's Brown County, and I looked this up, and St. Croix also all have positive uh, wild things. I think the game farm should have to pay for all of this personally, but uh, you know, that, another pipe dream. But uh, you know, do I'm gonna have Carrie take a look at this and think of, does she think this program truly will stop the spread of CWD, especially in the South where we don't have wolves? Then I think probably we should support it. It is just a pilot program. Anything else for anyone? I know this is kind of boring. I'm trying, I'll try to liven up the next section because that's where it gets good. All right, I'm gonna move on. We're almost, we're getting through this. Let me just check the time. Good. I hope I can get through this in 15 minutes because I will have to mute <laughs> for at least five. Okay, this is the Conservation Congress. So the first section came from the agency. The second question came from the Natural Resource Board. And these are the questions that come from us, the citizens. So these are resolutions that were already submitted and three years in a row to make it on the ballot. Uh, okay, so some I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on. I gotta move you guys again down to the bottom here. Um, this is, do we support the creation of a three-year antler point restriction trial for bucks uh, in Florence County? You know, it's another one of these things. Uh, they want to grow big bucks for harvest. I don't think this is necessary. So, um, you know, it's another one of those tough ones where, uh, you know, I'm still waiting on Gary for some of these deer and elk committee things. But I do know number two, reestablish in-person deer registration stations, back tags, and tagging procedures. We say yes. Doing this digitally would be fine if we were not in the midst of a CWD craziness. Um, and this way we can have a little more regulation. Um, we re uh, uh, Joel Cleefish actually uh, in Walker removed wearing back tags. Uh, we support the use of having to wear a back tag and we support carcass tagging that was done in the past. So basically this is restoring things to the way they were before, and I don't hate to be political, but before the Republicans came in and tried to get rid of all regulations. We are not anti go wild. Yeah, I think you can still call in your, your deer registration and do what you need to do, but we need to be able to get data off of these animals. Whether or not you choose to eat infected meat is a personal choice, but I, I want to know where these positive animals are being transported and I want to know more about prevalence. Right now, guys, we aren't really testing for CW. It's only uh, it's not a requirement. It's only voluntary. So that, that's what I say on that map we were looking at, Judy. That's just self-reporting. We got rid of mandatory. This would, this would, uh, this would I think help trespassing. It will help poaching, and then we can get more data on this. When I say I, I mean this. This uh, number five again. I can't tell you exactly how to vote on this. We actually support a replacement tag. Uh, for, for if let's say I go out and I shoot a deer, feed my family, and I go and I do the right thing, and I get this deer tested and it's CWD positive, this allows me to go and try to get a different deer that's not CWD positive. So I think uh, as far as incentive, I have read some studies that people are not testing because then like truly people that are in need uh, and just take, you know, to roll the dice. And I think that there's a public health component here too. That's why we say that. Would we support the issuance? So yeah, I think if you, I'll keep going. Extend the gun day registration deadline. Um, no, it's 2022. So then this is where we get a little more technical. Everyone has like a smartphone. They're saying that there are places in Wisconsin that you can't even find cell service. I don't think they really need to extend the gun deer registration. Uh, I don't think there's probably many people who, I think it's probably another one of these where it's just a few people miss the deadline. Well, this is the rules playing within the rules. Gonna keep going. Would we support making youth antler permits valid on any live lion type, public or private? Again, this is going to increase their chances of 
harvesting a deer. Um, and, but this is a question, and this is what I mean, these are guys are tricky. This is a hunter recruitment and retention question. Um, so basically uh, there are restrictions now with youth hunting deer um, and where they can hunt those deer and having a mentor. So that's really what this is about. Um, they think if, if youth are more successful in killing a deer, that they'll recruit more hunters. So you decide what you wanna do with that information. <sighs> Relocation of funding to establish a statewide dumpster program for handling deer carcass disposal. We agree. Uh, I don't want uh, someone because, you know, that's the other thing now too, is that we don't do this testing. We're not doing carcass removal. We're not doing this. A lot of times, um, you know, if their deer is CWD positive, they may go dump that animal. And that's spreading that prion disease. They still spread prions after death. So I think a proper disposal method for CWD positive deer would be good. And this is what else I like about it, is that above um, is that the hunters will pay for this program and not us. So it will increase the tags from and to eight and $10. So those are the, these will be your options. Yes, you should, you know, which way you wanna fund this program or you don't want to change it at all. Oops, I'm sorry. Matt, question 10, do we support or oppose captive uh, deer farms, game farms and shooting reserves? We oppose the presence of game farms and shooting preserves. And I, I don't even think I have to explain that one too much. If you have a question, go ahead and ask me. I'm gonna stop there because this is the long one. Does anyone have questions about those deer hunting questions? Okay. Hearing none, I'm moving on. Environment, oh shoot, come on. Environmental, darn it. Uh, question 11 and 12, improving, uh, imposing strict regulations on PFA chemicals. Uh, our stance is yes, <laughs> we should. It's poisonous. So do we support additional testing? And would we support to advocate for strong PFA protection and cleanup to ensure people have access and our wildlife and our fish and our birds and plants to clean drinking water? Yes. All right. I am going to go through these warm water committee ones re relatively quickly. These are very specific. Um, it depends on, you know, I would say read the question. A lot of these are either increasing or decreasing limits on small fish, bluegill, panfish. Um, and I'm going to just go through these. Here's an increasing the size of a muskie on a, uh, only a, in Bylas County. Here's for Lake Dubay, which I've never even heard of. <laughs> uh, but a lot of these, you know, just go through and see if you, um, but I'm going to stop at 18. So again, fish are near and dear to my heart, but a burbot um, is, a, is a native fish. So a lot of fish that sportsmen don't like are called grouped in a group called rough fish which are not protected, they have no regulations. You can just fish them and throw them in, you know, they're, they're garbage fish to people who are fishermen that like, especially sports fishermen. Um, they're not protected, they can be taken year round. They have no, there's no regulation. So uh, this is one I actually worked on. <laughs> so it's a little dear to my but uh, uh, this would require legislative change to remove a burbot, which is a native fish. It's actually very good at helping zebra mussels as well. Uh, to remove, I don't even think there should be a rough fish list, but to give that uh, fish regulation so that we can work to protect it. 10 panfish bag limit on Lake Mendota in Dane County. I wouldn't eat a fish out of Lake Mendota in Dane County, <laughs> but uh, you know, go ahead and read these again. There's 25 bag limit down to 10. Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just kind of going quickly. These are all just daily bag limits on panfish. Uh, a walleye slot. Um, here, this one is, uh, again, we're moving that bag limit down to three um, and different sizes. 23, there's one little lake, Woodman Lake. I bet there's a guy that sits on that lake uh, and he wants to change it from electric motor to no wake so they can get access to the river. Sure, I don't think that makes sense. All right, I'm gonna pause there. Do people have questions on fisheries questions? Hearing none. Uh, allow multiple. Re re <laughs> I shouldn't tell you why I'm conflicted on this one. Uh, should we allow two people on the back of an ATV? That's up to you. 
Uh, the reason there, uh, I know the guy that wrote this resolution, and it's because he wants to take his son on his ATVs to check beer baits. Like that's the only reason, like, that's literally it. So, but go ahead and read his thing. He says that it's, it, you know, reduces his pursuance of outdoor recreational activities. And they want to be able to throw their kid on the back of a four wheeler. It's up to you what you think about this. I, I am, uh, I'm divided because I'm mean, but, <laughs> um, you know, I don't think it's safe. There's a reason that you don't throw your kid on the back of an ATV, but if, you know what, I guess if they want to do it, it's their children. But um, this would basically say that the rules to ride an ATV don't apply as long as you're hunting, fishing, trapping, or doing agriculture work. So our position is, no, I don't. You should follow the same rules as everyone else. Okay, fur harvest committee. Do we support shooting a gun on dispatch animals within 50 feet of an unpaved road? No. Go ahead and read through that if you want. No. Okay, 26 is about the wolf season. Uh, our position here, this is a complicated question, uh, is about the size of the trap to, that you would catch a wolf in. So in Alaska and the Western states, we have bigger wolves there as well, or they're bigger wolves, the wolves are larger. They use eight inch set traps uh, instead of seven. Uh, no, is, our, is the answer to this question once you want to go through all of this. Um, in, in general, if, if uh, the, it, it's more, you'll be more successful using a larger set trap on wolves. So we say no to that question. <sighs> so that is 26. There is no wolf season right now, so it's a little irrelevant. Um, they'll probably have to bring it back, thanks to all of you and us. But uh, we, no is how we vote on 26. Again, this is going to be, you know, a little contentious. We do not, our organization does not support trap. So do we sort of change uh, number 27? That would exempt disabled trappers from trap placement and setting requirements. No, I'm sorry. And I, this is going to sound mean. It is like, just because you're disabled doesn't mean you shouldn't be following the rules. And there's a reason <laughs> why these are restrictions are here for not only my safety, but the safety of wildlife. So uh, I don't want my dog to be caught in a bobcat trap. I've had that happen to me. Uh, and you don't want that to happen to your dog or to you. So we do not support a change in the existing trapping regulations. Okay. <sighs> Hunting small game animals and unprotected species with the slingshot. No. <laughs> I just can't even believe that this is questions on here. I shouldn't laugh. Uh, no, we don't think that rabbits and squirrels should be shot with a slingshot. All right, here's the big one. And here we're going to get to some of the big ones. Do we support a wolf bull of 350 or less? We somewhat defeated this, but it's going to be very important. We do not support a population goal of 350 or less. Questions there? I know that's a big one for everyone. Okay. Uh, maintain hands on hunter safety classes. I will tell you that uh, during the pandemic, I took hunter safety class. I've never even held a gun. In, well, I've held a gun once. I've never shot a gun. I have no idea what I'm doing with guns. I passed hunter safety in 20 minutes and I had a license to go and shoot deer and a bunch of other animals. Uh, maybe I can ask uh, hunters on this call. I don't know. I think you can read through this. I believe it's probably important to take a hands-on course when you're handling weapons and shooting animals. Uh, I don't even remember what was in my hunter safety course because it was online. Uh, I think this is one of the ones that, you know, maybe we need to have safe firearm practices. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so our position on this is yes, hunting, uh, hunter safety should be in person and not online. Okay. This one I also is a little evil, so I laughed at. Uh, question 31, do we, again, oh, I'm sorry, to, for hands-on safety course. Question 32, no. Our position is no. I don't even know, this is another one where I was just like, <laughs> allow Purple Heart recipients to hunt over bait on private land at the same time on odd years when dog hunters go first. This is for hunting bears, so our answer is no. We do not support hunting bears over bait. Uh, allow an assistant to help a disabled person fish. Uh, this is going to be up to you. We are a no opinion on this on our organization. Um, I think that that's probably okay. I, you know, it's going to be up to you. Uh, it's just about assisting people there 
Um, clearly, we're not an anti-fishing, but we are anti-trapping. So I realize that that sounds a little, you know, like we're, but it's just, it's just true. This one is a really important one for us too. A wanton waste law. So I'll explain to you what it is. You can read about it here, but basically says you can't just go around killing things for fun if you're not going to use the animal. So if you're not going to go use the coyote's fur or you're not going to eat a deer, that you don't just go out killing animals for joy. Uh, basically, this would, uh, except for animals that are unfit for use, they're damaged, decayed, diseased, or infected. So what it does is that you, you must utilize the wildlife that you're killing. I think this law could help us with coyote killing contests because we know those guys just dump these animals on the roadside once they're done with their contest. So in question 34, we do support a, weight, a wanton waste law. And that's the same thing. Uh, the next one, should the DNR permit and regulate all hunting contests to control wanton waste? This is a tricky one. We, we do not think the DNR should be permitting hunting killing hunting contests because we oppose wildlife killing contests. So yes, we should have a weight, uh, a weight and waste law, but no, we should not be, I understand this and it's, you know, it's a step in the right direction, at least for regulation. But uh, I believe that if you answer this, yes, uh, that DNR should be permitting and, re and regulating killing contests. To me, that sends a clear message. The agency thinks that this is an okay practice to do. So no, we do not think that they should do that. I'm gonna take, take a little sip of my soda. Sorry guys. All right, I'm moving on. We're almost done. Before the, I'm trying so hard to get this done before my dogs start howling. Uh, okay, I'm gonna keep going down here. Do we support the state of Wisconsin finding funds to purchase the remaining, uh, sub darn it. Can you guys hear me okay? It's kind of being weird on my Yes. yes. Okay, uh, 36, yes. We think we should, uh, it's a conservation area. It's adding another 760 acres to this, to this land. So we're all about the public lands. Canoe and kayak registration. Uh, both 37 and 38, we support. Number one, uh, could give us, a, it gives the agency a little more funds and it's coming from not, in most people who kayak and canoe are not hunters, but hunters do too. And I don't, I think it's important. Kayaks and canoes can spread zebra mussel too. I think that we need to be paying in. Uh, so yes. The other reason is, is the registration is important. I can tell you when I talk to a warden about this, when someone disappears in a canoe or a kayak, I do it. I go canoeing by myself with my dog. If I were to turn my boat over, no one knows whose boat that was. This is, I think, also a public safety issue that this way the boats are registered. So if you go missing or you're dumb like me who gets startled by carp and tries to tip an entire <laughs> canoe, uh, that they can come look for you if you're missing. And, uh, you know, traps, tree stands and shacks, uh, they all have to be labeled. We are 100% in support of this. I don't, even want to, I don't even want to talk about this one. Number 39, pass the America, Recovering America's Wildlife Act. We're going to do a whole meeting on this act because it passed the Senate committee and it's going to pass. Um, yes, we vote yes, you should support this. I will tell you on another day why there are components of this bill that are incredibly problematic. This is oil and mining and gas money going to save non-game species, but that money is going to be dispersed to hunting organizations. We're going to try to make sure that it's given to the right people. But overall, the bill is good. It, it gives us $20 million uh, for non-game species. So we're talking about ornate box turtles and dragonflies and carnival butterflies and wolves <laughs> and a bunch of other animals that are on the endangered, uh, on our state endangered species list. So uh, more money is good. How we spend those funds is where it's going to get tricky. And there is some problematic language in this. When anything, anytime somebody tells you something's bipartisan, trust me, there's going to be a part where you're like, what's this? Uh, but uh, a lot of this is going to be given to expand hunting and trapping and hunter recruitment and retention. We're going to stop that in Wisconsin, hopefully. But um, I do find it ironic, and this is why, is that George Meyer of Wisconsin Wildlife Federation wrote this resolution. And yet they fought me on protecting Lake Sturgeon, which clearly he says to, in his thing, 
that the species of greatest conservation need include the lake sturgeon in Wisconsin. So isn't that interesting? So just know it is a good uh, plan. We are working now on public comment for the strategic plan. As of right now today, you can decide what you want, how you want to do this. Um, this could be a great thing. It has some problems. Overall, we have supported it. We sent letters into this, uh, but with adjustments, uh, with our problems in our bill, and they rejected our suggestions. But I talked to someone who's very even smarter than me today and said, you know, this is just a giant shell game. And I'm like, it really is. Like, we're taking oil and gas money, right? and it's from the federal leases on our lands and in our oceans, which is causing the destruction and climate change. Going to take that money, we're going to give it to sporting organizations in the state to save non game species when they are the two who have caused this mess in the first place. <laughs> so, again, we'll go into this more later. As of today, I do support the act. Mark Pocan, all of our every single congressman and both of our senators support this, um, and women, I should say. So, uh, it is highly supported. There's just some problems, and we'll get to that one. We'll do a whole talk about this because it's going to pass and we are preparing for that. But right now, we need the money. Revised definition of a muzzle loader, change the definition of a muzzle loader for the muzzle loader only deer season. Go ahead and take a look at that. Um, I don't even understand it because this is mostly like a gun question. Um, and I don't want to put anybody on the spot, uh, but we said no. <laughs> I don't know the reason why on that one. Sorry. <laughs> Use of PCA air guns, no. Uh, you can go through and read that. There's no, uh, it's just another weapon. I don't, then we oppose it. Okay, so the next one is, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we have to modify the Wisconsin constitution to increase voting fees. We do agree because we can use those fees to combat invasive species. So whoever wrote that was great. Um, I'm gonna take a little break on my throat and maybe if Pat Clark is on here, I had to ask him, he's our waterfall expert and these are gonna be these bird questions. But Pat, could you tell us why uh, <clears throat> it's our position that we do, do not support F size shot? And I'm just gonna take a little- uh, Sure, can you hear me okay? Yes. All right, um, the F size shot is used in uh, waterfall hunting and bird hunting. And the F size is just a very large BB within the shotgun shell itself. So what it does is it, uh, it is only about 40 to 45 of these little pellets inside of each shell then instead of the usual 70 to 75. So it's, it just encourages hunters to sh take far away shots, um, you know, 70 yards or more. And typically you shouldn't shoot at waterfall unless they're 40 yards or, or closer. So they're going to cause a lot of crippling. So we would definitely want to vote no on the F shot because it'll just cause a lot of more, it'll just cause more pain and suffering. Hey, thanks, Pat. All right, we're almost done, guys. We almost made it. Um, okay, I think we, I don't think this needs any explanation. Ban dogs from hunting wolves in Wisconsin. Here's the question. Do you support banning the use of dogs from hunting wolves? Should wolves get delisted again? Uh, yeah, we do support that. 45, end all killing contests. Um, this is going to be, be tricky, uh, but obviously we do not support wildlife killing contests. Do we support the Conservation Congress working with the Wisconsin DNR to develop and support a ban on all wildlife killing contests? Yes. I did. Oh, shoot, yeah, sorry. I almost made it to the end. I was thinking that there was more. So those are all the questions that are on there. I'll stop there and see if anybody has any questions. I just needed to get something to drink on. Are you sending out a list with kind of notes on these, Melissa, no. or posting? Okay, we well, if not. anybody has one, can you send it to me? Because I'm driving and I can't, I couldn't really take notes, although oh, I'm sure. Listening. Yeah, yeah. This I mean, season. we you'll see the, those questions. I think Sierra Club is sending that out, but and here I'll tell you the reason why we are not. Sierra Club is a 501c4, and so there are different rules of being a nonprofit. We cannot, um, and I don't know, I think we could probably, we used to do it in the past. But ever since we beat the state of Wisconsin <laughs> in a lawsuit, uh, we are just being careful. 
So 501c4 organizations like League of Conservation Voters, don't use theirs, but uh, Sierra Club, Humane Society that do active lobbying, um, they can give you a voting guide. In our rules, we probably can, but we don't wanna take the risk and we're being watched. <laughs> and I just know that we are because I just, we are, uh, because we won and they don't like that. So, um, and they know that we're organized and we, you know, we've got this killing contest on here. So Humane Society, um, Sierra Club, we will absolutely share their voting guides. So there may be a question or two that we disagree on with those other, other uh, organizations, just so you know. And that's why I wanna just tell you, go through this one uh, with you and give you our thoughts on this. Again, I'm still waiting uh, for, you know, we, I really want to experts, especially for some of these scientific ones like CWD, um, you know, this isn't make or break. This isn't, gonna, you know, all of this is just asking. It doesn't actually implement any policy. So if there's something that you don't know, you can mark no opinion. It's not the end of the world. Um, but yes, other uh, organizations that we partner with, I have not had a chance to look at their voting guide to see, you know, what's different or not. But I, I don't really know, not to sound mean, I, I don't really know that I think that's ethical to scrutinize another group's voting guide. I can only just tell you where our organization stands on these questions. And I also don't necessarily think it's ethical to tell people how to vote because you should be reading these questions and get familiar with this process there. I sound like an old Marmy school teacher, like you should be doing this yourself instead of a cheat sheet, which I absolutely would do if this was anything. Like if it was a different issue, I'd be like, where's the cheat sheet from, you know, uh, health code for all and just cheat. But I understand what you're saying. This is complicated, but I, you know, I did want to give you guys a chance to ask questions. There will, I'm sure you're going to see cheat sheets circulated uh, from more of the more environmental and human minded groups. Um, and so I guess, no, I can't share a cheat sheet with you or a write-up. Uh, and that's why we're doing this so that you can ask questions, but they'll be out there. And I can say, you know, Sierra Club uh, pretty much views things about exactly the same as we do. Almost. Okay, thanks. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I mean- You can that's, message me and exactly. let me know if there's anything else that's like really important. I mean, most of it will be pretty obvious, but again- Yeah, I, mean, I think you, you know, the, the really important ones, I mean, unless you're a little bluegill living in a lake, which you know, I think are important, but for our, you know, we can, you. there's, there's so, so many fires guys. So really, really think about it's again, banning these wildlife killing contests stopping that 350 or less nonsense that they're always trying to cram down our throats the bad guys um you know the, i think the walleye restriction uh i think that's pretty exciting and that's going to be uh but i will tell you that this is good news for our so this is the part where i'm, I'm gonna actually just stop the recording because we're gonna go on a discussion but um so that it you know i don't need to put this up on youtube so let me just stop the recording and then we'll get into like the good stuff that i like to gossip about <laughs> but uh, 